And so that's why we're next talking about what the PDB file is like. It's actually a text file. So you can look at it uh, if you're on Windows. You can look at it using WordPad or Notepad. Uh, you can use an edit if you're on a Linux machine or many of the main editors. Now, if you look at it in Word, uh, you don't want to save it as a rich text format. You don't want to save it as a dot format. You need to save it as a text format, TXT. It's a TXT file, just a simple ASCII text file. So you can look at it and save it there. Uh, at the top of the file is the header information. And so if you just do a search, uh, and you can search for biological, if you want to pull up biological unit, and it will tell you there. So the top of the file is the header. Down later on, you will see some atom lines. Now there's a lot of information in the header. And if you want to look at a file, uh, you can display the file on the website. And if you scroll on down, you'll see atoms. Now there's one line in the file for every atom in the structure. And so uh, the atom lines begin with atom, then there's atom number. And the atom numbers is a text file. You can move these lines around. Atom numbers aren't kept track of by the program. So it doesn't matter if you move the atom numbers out of order. So there's atom numbers and then there's atom name. Now you do need to understand the naming convention of a protein amino acid. And so there's a backbone to the protein amino acid. That's NCACO. In the typical protein data bank file format, that's at the beginning of the residue. And then comes the side chain. Now each position in the side chain is known by a Greek letter. So the first position is alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, and then beta. And so the, the second part to the atom name is the position. A for alpha, B for beta, G for gamma, D for delta, E for epsilon, and then if you have a longer side chain, you have zeta. Now if you have two betas or two gamma positions or two deltas, then you'll see a number following one or two, C beta one, C beta two, for example. Uh, and so uh, all of these atoms belong to a methionine residue, and that residue is residue number one. So here's your residue numbers. Now the next three uh, numbers, are real numbers, and they're the position of that atom in the coordinate, and then we have an occupancy. Now that occupancy is almost always one. Now there are two situations, at least two, where it will not be one, but these are the two most common. One of those situations is if you have an ion, like a calcium or an iron or a zinc, something like that. Those atoms may not be at that position at 100% occupancy. So you may see a lower occupancy than one. Most often when you have a, a polymer chain, you know the occupancy has to be one, except for the case where the side chain adopts more than one conformation. Most of the time they may adopt two. The side chain goes this way and it goes that way. So it's this way 50% of the time, it's that way 50% of the time. Or sometimes you may see three different conformations. But if you have alternate conformations, then you start seeing duplicate sets of the side chain atoms. And so, but generally uh, the occupancy is one, and then the number that follows after is known as a temperature factor. So molecules sort of move according to their thermal motion, and that electron density is spread out. The higher the temperature, the more that electron density is spread out. So these temperature factors are some measure of how spread out that electron density is, how much thermal motion uh, that atom's undergoing. Now, if that atom's undergoing a lot of motion, there may be no electron density because that atom is not in the same place in every molecule within the crystal. And so then you will have missing atoms. 
you may just in the middle of your structure have a loop that's missing because it's actually moving around in solution. And so it's not in the same place in every molecule in the crystal, and so there's no density there uh, for that um, for those atoms. So if you look in your header for missing, you'll see which loops or side chains are missing. You can be missing just parts of side chains or, or the whole residue, including backbone atoms. Now the other thing you see in this PDB file down near the bottom, bottom if you have non-standard atoms, if you have an organic ligand bound, if you have carbohydrates, if you have a heme group, any prosthetic group like that shows up as het atom or hetero atom. Some of the atoms that show up as hetero atoms are crystallographic waters. Now you're only going to see water molecules in a crystal structure. Uh, and those are water molecules that become associated or hydrogen bonding with side chains in the molecule or backbone atoms. And you see those little red dots here. Those are all the oxygens for your water molecules. Now remember, I said at most resolutions, you're not going to see hydrogen. So of H2O, all you see is the oxygen for your water molecules. Those show up as het atoms. Most of the time, these are not important. They're, you can delete them unless they happen to be important for making contacts to a ligand. So I recommend reading the paper, if there's a published paper, to see if there are critical waters in the active site. Otherwise, most of the waters you don't need to worry about. Ligands is heteroatoms. I've already talked about those. Where you have non-standard molecules, you also have connect information. Where are the bonds in the molecule? So that's the information you need to get from the protein data bank for an x-ray crystal structure. Uh, do I have any questions about crystallographic structures? OK, so the question is, if you have more than one biological unit in the asymmetric unit, like our last example there, which had four chains or two whole complete biological units in the asymmetric unit. How do you go about picking which biological unit uh, you want to use? What I uh, will do actually is I will separate uh, the asymmetric unit into two files. Uh, and you can do that in PyMol. You can separate that into two objects or um, as if you'd read in two different PDB files. And then I will superimpose, we're going to do that later today, actually shortly. I will superimpose one biological unit on the other biological unit. And I will look to see how similar they are. If I'm doing a thorough job, I will actually uh, compare the two uh, biological units. And then I will look to see where the differences are. Now, in some cases, there are loops that are making contacts to other molecules. And so loops far away from the active site may be slightly different. But if they're far away from the active site, I don't worry about that. If there are changes close to important areas of the molecules, then I have to figure out which of these is more native-like. And then you may go read the paper. You may find, for an example, one of the structures I'm working with now, uh, one of the biological units has the ligand bound, and the other one does not have the ligand bound. So then I'm going to take the biological unit with the ligand bound. So there may be important differences. It does happen but it maybe happens once out of 100 structures, something like that. Um, and if there's not important differences, if it's just differences far away from the important areas of the molecule, then it doesn't matter which biological unit you may pick. Sometimes I'll look at missing atoms. There may be a loop ordered in one structure because of the crystal contact, and it's disordered in the other biological unit. So I'll take the biological unit with the fewest missing atoms. So there are different issues like that. Most of the time it won't matter, but sometimes there are subtle differences. 
if you're not certain, uh, then you can come and ask me and I can help you do that evaluation. Yes, Landon. Um, is uh, the person, are they going to download file? They need to click on download file and say PDB text. Oh, probably what's happening is when she clicks on the file, it pulls up a 3D viewer. What she needs to do is open Notepad first and then, or text edit if, she, if she's on a Mac, he or she, and then have them open the PDB file that way. Yeah. If you just click on the PDB file, it'll generally pop it up into a 3D viewer. Um, so you need to open your Notepad or WordPad, text at it first, 